from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name the name of the lord to be prayed from from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea the name of the lord is to be prayed from the rising from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea the name name of the lord should be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea the name of the lord is should be let us praise him praise him the lord praise him praise God is holy. 
Yakunaza Kobu Chafu Wanda, Yakunaza Kobu and Zibishimu, to get a muck when we meet at one. do anything the lord is not proud it's us to worship god so as we are singing that song that says that light of the world you step down into darkness that bible says that the light of the lord shone and the darkness could not overcome it may we believe that for our families for our children for everyone even for our nation because it is the family that begins a nation and we are the potential parents. We are the parents and we shall still be the parents until God says it's the end.
everyone woke up this morning. How sinful, Lord, we've been in front of you. But your mercy still surpasses everything, Lord Father. We thank you for the fact that we are parents. Lord, as we are going to fellowship, we pray that you come and inhabit this fellowship, Father. For Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. And everything stands for you, Lord. Human might does not work, Lord. We are nothing, Father. May we die to self that you will be alive in us, Lord Jesus Christ. Creating us clean hearts that really serve you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hearts that don't tire, Father. Hearts that are never weary, Lord Jesus Christ. May we have that unwavering faith, Father. May we never stop praying to you, Lord. Amidst the challenges, amidst the economic situation, amidst everything, Lord. Father, that as parents, Lord, you will direct us. Lord, we acknowledge the fact that we are transmission channels and our source is you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we are blind, Lord, and, we, and that effect of blindness always comes out in the children, Father. But Lord, today we look up to you, Lord. We would like to begin a new chapter with you as parents. At whatever stage, at whatever age our children are. Father, at whatever, whatsoever is there. Father, would like to begin a new chapter with you. Would like to open a new book with you, Lord Jesus Christ. We would like to come back to you, Father, one more time. Lord, we would like to adore you one more time. Father, would like to say thank you very much. We've taken you for granted. Sometimes maybe the children you gave us have done wrong and we've spoken wrong, Lord Jesus Christ. We've confessed negatively in front of them, Father. But today we come back to you asking for your forgiveness, Lord. Because you're the only one who can forgive. And you're the only one who gave us the children. The Bible says that children are a gift from the Lord. Father, we don't want to disorganize the gifts you gave us. We really want to keep them in this safe place really want to nourish them, we really want to say yes to everything that you've given us, Lord. We pray that you transform our minds, our hearts, and everything, and we pray for the guest speaker, Father. May you use her, Lord, may she die to self, that she will be alive in her, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, the 
a spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We really come, we really welcome you. And we are very, very, very honored that you've come ministers. Thank you very much and would like to have a nice time with you. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. Amen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Eh, that sounds so. <laughs> I'll try again. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're very, very, very welcome this afternoon to our parent seminar. I think I'm going to make a, a suggestion. Can we move to the middle, like this, this set of pews and this one, so that we're kind of closer together? Is that a bad idea? Before we continue, I think it's a good idea. So if you're in the other pew, maybe you move into these ones. So we are a bit closer. There is someone at the very back. It would be nice for her to move closer as well. We move this side. I think it's easier. That way we can communicate much better. Okay, as everybody settles down, you're all very welcome this afternoon to our parent seminar. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Vanessa Nabeta Chibirige. Many people call me teacher. I am a teacher by profession in every way. <laughs> I'm also a mother. Um, and I happen to be the one that leads the children and teens ministry. No, the chairperson. I get confused, one of those things. But anyway, I, I, I am in the children and teens ministry. Um, and I, I happen to be the chairperson who represents children. So you're very, very, very welcome. I'd like to start by welcoming our own very vicar, uh, Canon Balwa. You're very welcome this afternoon. You might want to wave. Some people may not know you. <laughs> that is our own Canon Balwa, and I think his wife is with us here. Uh, yes, she's right there, Mrs. Balwa Ruth. You're very welcome. Uh, we also have our uh, Reverend Asimwe. Reverend David Asimwe is our youth, should I say youth minister? You, that one. Hey, she, <laughs> he's, the, he's the reverend that represents the, the youth. You're also very, very welcome. I see our Father's Union chairperson. Several, you're welcome, Mr. Kawalia. I think the Mother's Union is represented, but there are many masks, so I am a bit confused. Uh, Mrs. Sana, oh, Mrs. Sanavja is right there. <laughs> Oh, and, and yeah, thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. You're welcome. Uh, we have our children and teens ministry team. Some of them are here. Um, our choir is right here. All of these precious ladies are part of our children and the teens ministry. And we have teacher Sylvia. Teacher Sylvia, please wave. Teacher Sylvia leads our teens and at the church. Uh, we also want to welcome in a very special way our guest speaker, Dr. I don't know what that's called, Dr. Nabunya Mubiru or Ms. <laughs> Dr. Mubiru, you're very, very welcome. Thank you very, very much for coming. We are looking forward to hearing from you. This afternoon, my job is a very simple one. Um, we have had parents on our hearts for a very long time as children and teens. And we have felt that it is important to remind ourselves of what parenting is about. We have heard so many things about parenting. But one of the things that was laid on our hearts as we prayed through this seminar is the fact that parents just need to be reminded who are they as parents in the first place. And so we, as we prayed and thought through what would be important it's just an important thing that Jeremiah 6.16 says. So I'm going to read it. For those of you who may not have looked at it, it's up there. So I'm going to read it, and I will welcome our guest speaker. Jeremiah 6.16 says, and this was Jeremiah speaking to the people of Judah about the judgment that was going to come or the siege that was going to be laid on Jerusalem. They had a lot of false 
so many false words were being spoken, but this is what the Lord said to them. And I think this is what we want to remember. This is what the Lord says, Jeremiah 6, 16. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you'll find rest for your souls. But of course, we said we will not walk in it. So I hope we will heed the Lord's voice and walk in the ancient paths. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome our very own um, Dr. Mobiru to come and speak to us. You're very welcome. I'll let her give all the details of who she is. You're very welcome, Yabo. Hello. Is it audible? Yes. Praise God, church. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Wow. Indeed, God is good. For me to stand here before you, I really thank God for this day and this time. I do not take it for granted. As I've, you've already heard, I'm Dr. Evelyn Nabunya. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I wish to, ap before I introduce who I am, I wish to appreciate Chisugu, St. Stephen's Church, Chisugu, Church of Uganda, for inviting me to the Children's Ministry Seminar for this year. I know you have seminars, and this time you chose to invite me, and I'm very grateful. I wish to acknowledge... <laughs> The people already introduced, I will not mention all of them. The vicar is around, the reverend of the youth reverend, the chair of the youth, teens and children's ministry, and everyone present. You took off time to come because you believed something good would come out of this. Thank you for coming and for inviting me. I wish also to take this opportunity to appreciate the people who reached out to me, inviting me for this. One of those is uh, Mrs. Julie Sevide Kamia and also Ms. At Stella Atim. Thank you for reaching out and really coordinating to see that this happens. So I've, as, you've say, as I've already mentioned, I'm, I'm Dr. Evelyn Nabunya. I'm glad to let you know that I'm, a, I'm married and I did not move alone. I moved with my husband, Dr. Drake Moviru, is around. <laughs> and in two months' time, we'll be making 29 years in marriage. <laughs> so we thank God because it is him who has given us this journey. And in this, these almost 29 years, the Lord has blessed us with five children. And our first daughter is around, Elizabeth. Uh, she's at the university second year taking architecture. So at least some of the family members are around, others are in school. Yes. So I'm a medical doctor. And I've been a medical doctor for the last 29 years. It's in August 1993 that I started my internship, and I thank God for this time. So you can see that the time of marriage and the time of practice are almost the same. So the moment I finished school, I also got married, and I thank God for that. So 29 years as a medical doctor, 27 of them working closely with women and women issues. So my specialty is in obstetrics and gynecology, helping women all through pregnancy, delivery, and also other problems related to women. I'm also the, uh, I'm a senior consultant, OBSGYN. So I'm also the executive director of Mlago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. 
a hospital that is new. Some of you may have been there. Some of you may have known it. It specializes in reproductive health issues. Okay, but we also see the men. When do we see the men? When there are issues to do with reproduction. Reproduction takes two people. So where there are fertility issues, the men are also our clients because it takes two. So thank you very much for allowing me to come and speak to you concerning returning to our primary responsibility as parents. I felt you'd get bored looking at me all the time, so I prepared something small that you can look at. I hope it is there already. Really in line with the verse that has been read in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. We will look at a number of things. One of the things we'll look at is who is a parent. We may wonder who is a parent. So we need to know who a parent is, what the primary responsibilities of parents are, what the Bible tells us about the biblical role of parents, and how we can return to our primary responsibility as Christian parents. And then we'll see how to end that. So that is just an outline. I hope you can see. Is it clear? Thank you. Who is a parent? You may be wondering. We say we are parents, but who is a parent? It's one who begets a child or gives birth to a child or nurtures, okay, or raises a child. So a parent may be biological or non-biological. Remember, we say a, a child is raised by a whole village. So all those people who have helped in training, correcting, nurturing, they are also parents. Yes. So parents have a responsibility to care for the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of their child. So this is a whole child, physical, emotional, eh, how the child feels, the spiritual part, so every part of a child, we are responsible as parents. The biblical role of a parent is to be a good steward of the children God has placed into our care. Then you ask, who is a steward? Who is a good steward? If God has placed us as stewards. A steward is like an ambassador. So in this world, we are here like ambassadors. We are respected representatives of God to our children. He has given us that responsibility. So we act on behalf of God towards our children. So the most important biblical duty of a parent is to teach their children about Jesus in action and in word. So the actions we do, the words we say, the teachings we give. Remember, we have parents, we have godparents, we have all the people who help in nurturing and raising our children. So what are the primary responsibilities of parents? Just to remind ourselves. Remember, we want to return, go back to the primary responsibilities. But which are those? One of them is providing a safe and happy home. In that safe and happy home, we have proper nutrition. This nutrition starts even before the baby is born. Remember I told you we look after women. So even that nurturing, the nutrition while still pregnant is important. We've seen some babies suffering because of some conditions which could have been prevented if the mother had taken a proper nutrition. For example, folic acid, a small tablet, but the baby comes up with neurological problems which could have been prevented. So it's important all through pregnancy, as we feed our babies, breast milk is the best. Recently, this week, I saw a little baby who was born in the hospital, was discharged, and had to come back because the mother was not breastfeeding well. She had opted to give formula feeding and in the process, the baby was missing certain nutrients. This was a preterm baby. 
and breast milk is the best. So the baby had to be readmitted. So breast milk is the best. So even as the children grow, we need to make sure they have a balanced diet. You've seen that diet that has carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals. So fruits and vegetables are very important. I know during the COVID time, people learned to take fruits, a lot of fruits and vegetables, which is good. Thank you. In a happy and safe home, remember we need quality time. Many people say I don't have time, but what does it mean to have quality time? Is it just sitting and talking? There are many things that we can do to help us get quality time with our children. Even bath time, as you bathe your child, as you cook, you, they also participate, bring this, mix this. That is all quality time. As we eat, as we watch a program together with the children, all oh, that is quality time. As we go to the farms, let's go with them. All oh, that is quality time. Any time spent with them, especially when they are activities, all oh, that is quality time. Recreational activities. You can decide to have some recreation at home. For example, in the lockdown, we decided to play badminton at home. <laughs> yes, so people would compete. And the biggest uh, competitor or competitor was my husband competing with the children. They would play uh, badminton. So let's create t things that we can do together because those are good. A happy home needs to be safe. We need to know that our homes are safe for our children. They are safe from abuse, maybe physical, mental, sexual, all kinds of abuse. Because where there is abuse, a child will not be happy. So providing a safe and happy home is very important. Another responsibility is showing unconditional love. There's no love because, love if for our children. We love them, we love them, that's full stop. So how do we show our unconditional love? So as we show unconditional love, just to remind you, we need to connect with our children. It's a deliberate effort to connect with our children. We need to connect with them consciously and it needs to be intentional. So we need to create time. We need to spend quality time together. It is intentional. We have time for who? For the people we love. When you love someone, you create time. So if you love your children, indeed you create time for the children. Sometimes it takes sacrifices to create this time. I know we are living in a very busy world where everyone is very busy. Both parents many times are working and they work long hours to be able to make ends meet. But sometimes we need to sacrifice. We may need to sacrifice some time. Okay, there are things that we may even sacrifice. I remember some years back, I received a promotion, and that promotion required me to move up country. And that meant leaving my children, leaving my husband. So I looked and I weighed, I, want the, uh, I like the promotion, but I also love my family. How do I handle the two? So I sacrificed the promotion. I left the promotion to stay with my family. And I'm glad that I made that choice. Seven years later, the promotion came again. So God did not forget me. I said at least the opportunity was there if it means raising my children, I will know that I, that's what I did in this world. But God knew that I also needed the promotion and he brought it and brought others as well. So let's spend time with our children. Let's be approachable. Many times we come back maybe from work or from whatever activity and we are tired. A child comes to you and you say, I'm tired, please, you go. Let's make that friendliness so that they know that, okay, they've come, you're willing to listen to them, but maybe you can discuss later because you may end up not relating well 
when you're tired or you are disturbed, but be approachable. Let's be approachable to the children. Ask questions. You may wonder how does asking questions show unconditional love? But we need to ask questions. We need to ask, how are you today? How was your day? Who are your friends? Many questions. As we ask, we get to know how our children are. And they also know that we care. They may wonder why you're asking, but through that, you're showing the care. Because you'll be able to identify areas where you can intervene as a parent or encourage. So let's ask the questions. I know my father used to ask many questions, but when he would see you maybe hesitant or reluctant, he wouldn't insist. He wouldn't insist. So as we ask the questions, Let's be open. Give them some freedom. Not that they have to answer every question, but it helps them to think about the questions you've asked. Not every question has answers. Communicate, communicate, communicate. We communicate verbally. We communicate the nonverbal, the way you look at a child, the way you talk back. All those are ways of communication. Okay, communication is not only talking, but also the non-verbal communication. And now there are many ways of, uh, means of communication. Phones are there and many others. So let's communicate when an opportunity is there. Correcting inappropriate behavior is another way of showing unconditional love. If you love a child, you correct them. You don't want them to continue in their wrong ways, but whatever recommendations we make as we correct them, whatever suggestions, they need to be done in love. Then they will know that you did it out of love, you are correcting them out of love. So not out of anger, but showing them the direction. So as parents still, we need to teach our, one of our responsibilities is teaching protection and self-care. We need to teach our children and prepare them for the dangers. We will not always be with them. We are all surrounded by dangers, whether in the home or out of the home. It may be in school. It may be in church even, in society. So there are a lot of dangers out there. So we need to keep our children free from physical emotional and sexual abuse. So we need to be able to teach them how to protect themselves, how to identify when such problems may happen so that they are able to go through. There is bullying, for example, in schools. How can children be protected? How can you tell them that this is called bullying when they share with you an experience? We need to keep them safe from items within reach, even in our homes. I know of a child who was at home and somehow got a bottle and drank whatever was in that bottle. I don't remember, probably it was kerosene, and this child has really suffered, had to go through several operations in trying to correct the corrosion through the esophagus because the child had swallowed and it had really disturbed. So the child has mental issues, although he's growing well physically, but the learning ability is affected. So let's protect our children. The fact that something does not smell good for them, they will just drink because it's a bottle and the bottle means drinking. Let's keep the environment safe. Probably there are stairs that need protection, protecting them from falls, protecting them from dangers within our reach. Let's get to know our caregivers. We, as we go to work, we, tend, we leave many of our children with caregivers. Do we get references? When you get this boy or girl who come to help you to work at home with you, do we get references? Do you check where they've worked or the people who have brought them? Do we do any background checks? 
the kind of home, the kind of background they are from. If we don't, it's high time we do. I think you've seen many things on social media showing abuses of children. So we need to take care of that area as well. Let's take precaution. Sometimes uh, we may not lock our doors at night and that's how thieves or robbers may get in. Safety things, for example, when you're in a car with the children, do they put on their seat belts to stay safe? Do not leave a child, for example, in a car. There are children in some areas where it gets so hot and a, a parent leaves a child in a car, locks it up, saying I'll quickly come back, but only to come back and the child is no more because the car overheated. So let's take care of such. In the hospital where our daughter was born, we were asked, do you have a, a car seat? They said, if you don't have, we can lend you because they couldn't allow you to move without a car seat, a child in a car seat. I know it, that's not a, one of our requirements here, but to let you know how serious people take safety. Okay? In other places, children less than 12 are not allowed to sit in the front seat. They all have to sit in the back. And this is for safety reasons. They are still small. Many, some of the cars have airbags. So when that airbag comes, it will only suffocate the child. So it's better for the children to sit in the back, not in the front. So let's take care of those safety issues so that we protect our children. We need to monitor our children's health. How do we monitor? We've already talked about the nutrition, water. I think people these days have learned to drink water. 20 years ago, I think there was no bottled water like this, but now we have plenty of water. So there are opportunities, and I'm glad you've served water so we can also take a sip. Shelter. These are the basic eh, things that help in health. What kind of shelter are we in? Is our, place, is our place protected from mosquitoes? You know mosquitoes and malaria. Is there a way? Can you close windows in time? Is there dampness in the home? Dampness will encourage mold and will end up with uh, respiratory tract infections, even pneumonia. So we need to take care of the shelter in which we have our children, in which we take care of them. Are they warm in bed? Are they well covered? Because if they are not well covered, they end up getting diseases. Is the clothing appropriate, especially for the babies who will not speak? They will not tell you that I'm too cold. They will not tell you I'm too hot. They will only cry. You think maybe it is that diaper that needs changing. When the baby indeed is hot, is sweating, is getting dehydrated. And this is one of the reasons why little babies are admitted because of high temperature. They are overcovered, they sweat, they are not yet breastfeeding enough, and they get issues. So let's take care of the clothing, especially for the babies. We need medical care. We need to be able to offer medical care to our children. Medical care comes in different forms. It may be prevention. There are many programs, for example, of immunization. Do we take our children in time? So it's not only the very young, but also the older ones. You have heard of a disease caused by hepatitis B that affects the liver. And some people eventually get liver cancer. But there is a vaccine, so this is available. Let's have them immunized, OK? There is a vaccine that prevents human papilloma virus a virus that causes cancer of the cervix. This is one of the leading causes of cancer in women in Uganda and many developing countries. Yet it can be prevented. There are school programs, girls of nine years, primary school, they get HPV vaccine. So if an opportunity comes, let's vaccinate them. We help them to prevent 
cancer of the cervix later. So any other preventive measures, let's have them in place. But however, if a child is sick, let's take them for care and let's make sure they take medication as prescribed so that they get well. Exercise is another important area that we may forget. You see, there are different exercises. So even walking, running, playing, all of these are exercises. So exercise is important for good, for good health. As we monitor health, let's also give them some space. Space is important. What do we mean by space? A time to be alone. It's not that all the time we have to be with our children. They also need to have some independence. In that independence, it helps them to reflect on many things. It helps them to know that they have to deal with many things in this world. There are mental issues today that are rising, but if someone is given space to think, they may reflect on what has happened and it may help them. And it helps them to dream about the future to make plans and to have goals. When someone has a goal, they have a purpose, and they know that there is reason for them to move on, and they compete for whatever there is. I don't know if, if you've understood that space. <laughs> Time alone how it helps a child. For example, right from primary school, I wished and prayed and dreamt of be becoming a doctor, and God did that for me, okay? So it helped me to work hard, to stay focused on what I wanted to be, and God indeed did that. So let's give them time. It will help them to reflect and to learn. Another responsibility is helping to strengthen self-esteem. Each child is unique. So when you have children, sometimes we tend to imagine that the way one behaves is the way another will behave. But they are different. They are very different. We need to respect their individuality. Let's not compare that so-and-so does things this way. We expect you to do the same. Let us accept them as they are so that they know that that is what they are and we accept it. Many times we've seen parents wishing that children join a certain club or a certain sports in school. We can encourage them, but let's not push them. It may not be their passion. We can encourage them, please join this, join that. But if the child declines, don't push. Let's give them the opportunity to choose. When we notice certain behavior or children have, have achieved, for example, in academics or in other ways, let's acknowledge them. When they show pro-social behavior, let's encourage them. When we wonder, what is this pro-social behavior? Behavior which in which people benefit. Someone showing kindness, someone sharing, donating, cooperating. You know, children, it's not very easy, but when a child shares, encourage them. Has got one biscuit, breaks it. That is pro-social behavior, something that is benefiting another. Let's encourage that. You know, when we encourage from the family, then in the society, people will continue that pro-social behavior, and our world will be a better world. Let's encourage proper hygiene. No one is born knowing how to bathe themselves, how to look after themselves, but they learn. So let's teach them. Let's encourage them. When they look good, they also feel good. When people say, oh, you are looking good, they also feel good. So let's make sure they, they learn how to brush their teeth, bathing, taking care of themselves. So it's our responsibility 
as parents. Let's set realistic and age-appropriate expectations. If, for example, you have your five-year-old, do you expect them to go clean up their room? There are certain things they may be able to do, and there are areas where you can assist. Let's give them tasks according to their age, age appropriate. So when your child maybe misbehaves, that's the time, that's an opportunity to teach them, to show them that what they are doing is not okay, and to teach them what should have been done. Instead of criticizing, saying, why have you done this? Should have, eh? But let's teach them. Let's teach them the right thing to do. So eh, such opportunities are teaching opportunities. Another responsibility is establishing limits and being consistent with punishment. So as we establish limits as we carry out punishment. Remember, this is part of discipline. And discipline needs to be structured. When you do a certain thing, this is how you'll be disciplined. Consistent. Saying that last time when I didn't do my homework, this happened. Mom did this or dad did this. This time, I've not done it, nothing has happened. So when we decide to do something, let's be consistent. Let it be predictable. If you go out without permission, you'll be punished. So that they know, if I do this, this will happen to me. Let the punishment be fair. Let them know that whether it is child A or B, once you do this, you'll be disciplined for it, so that they know there's fairness. It's for everyone, not certain children are not others. Let's carry it out across. Overpampering. By overpampering, are we doing good to our children? So we are told not to give everything the way they ask. Every time they ask for anything, you give them. So don't just give them all the things you wished you had. As you grew up, there are things you wish, I had this, I wish I had this. Instead, teach them all those things you wish you had known. As you grow up, you say, hey, I wish I had known this. Probably I wouldn't have done this. So teach them those. So buying the most expensive designer shoes and clothes, that is not showing love, and, okay? That is part of over pampering. Picking up after children. To imagine that uh, when children uh, leave their room, dirty, you are going to do all the cleaning as a parent, I think is not good. They need to know that they also need to participate. There are things according to the age that they can do. There is one who can take things to the kitchen, another one can wash, another one can cook, another one can slash the grass, okay? Depending on things, but to pick up after them, clean and do everything, is over pampering. When a child misplaces their toys, you say, oh, sorry, let me get another one for you. I mean, let's make sure they are also responsible people. They know that if you lose it, you've lost it. You need to take care. Bailing children out of trouble every time. Every time a child is in trouble, maybe you are called at school every time you're there to defend. So when they know that you're there to defend them, that is all over pampering. So let's be careful as we show love. Being a good model for behavior is another responsibility. As they say, actions speak louder than words. So the children see what we do. Do we use respectful language and not vulgar language? The people we talk to the things we listen to, for example, radio stations. In the morning, children get up very early. They are moving to school with their parents. What do their parents listen to? What kind of radio stations and what kind of language? So let's see that they use respectful language. Let's respect their feelings. 
they also have feelings. As much as they are children, they also have feelings. Let's respect them. They have opinions. Let's respect them. You want to do a certain thing, you say, okay, how do we do this? They have their opinion. Let's listen. Let's respect their privacy. They also have privacy. They are things they wish to do. We need to give them some space, but of course we need to keep watch. You don't give privacy and you walk away. You keep watching. We need to respect their individuality, as we mentioned. Our children's education, very important. We need to ensure that they, good, they get good education. Okay? They have the necessary resources or requirements. They need books at school, pens, Let's endeavor to provide them so that a child is comfortable and is able to learn. Let's research the kind of schools we are taking our children to. There's a lot written about different schools, but let's do our search. Is this the kind of school that suits your family best? For example, when our children were quite young, there's a daycare we used to take them, and we would take them very early in the morning. When you get to the daycare, you find one of the caregivers, he was a man, and he's busy brushing his teeth. And you imagine you're going to leave your children with this man, and these are girls. So we decided to change. We were not comfortable. So get to know where they are going. Stay involved in their education. When they've achieved academically, acknowledge them. Praise them. They've achieved this term. Don't say we'll wait until third term. Every term is a new term. Let's encourage them. Let's get to know our children's teachers, the school staff, because that's how they'll be able to give feedback. Even the teachers, the school staff give feedback. So it's not only the head teachers or the class teachers. There are other people as well. The house mistresses, they can tell you, oh, but your child, this is what is happening. So let's get to know them. For those who are in day schools, do we give space for children to do homework? Because remember, they also need to concentrate. They need time. They need space where they can do their homework and concentrate well. So let's create an environment that encourages en education even in our home. As much as we want them to do their homework, sometimes they delay, and at times we are tempted to help, but let's not do so. Let's assist, encourage, but let's not be the ones doing the homework. We've had uh, at school teachers saying, but when I corrected this child, the child said, but it's not me who did the homework, it's mommy, and mommy has got the wrong answer. <laughs> So let's not be the ones to do the homework, otherwise if we do it and the child gets marks or results that are less, they will start doubting us. Let's assist them, guide them, let's ask them to get more help, but let's not be the ones giving them what they are doing. So we've talked a lot about the responsibilities of a parent, the primary responsibilities, but what does the Bible say? What is the biblical role of parents? The Bible tells us that right from an early phase in life, people are rebellious, evil, right from early on. And therefore, there's need for correction and training. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 2, we are told that there will be disobedience to parents in the last days. And we know we are living in the last days. We've seen disobedience. A child is told something and they decide to do other things. So the Bible talked about it, that there will be disobedience in these last days. In Proverbs 22:15. We are told that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the road of correction shall drive it far from him. So a child, right from early childhood, there's foolishness in their heart. 
You've seen uh, children beating their parents in public. Someone has gone to the supermarket. I want this particular doll or car. You say, no, we cannot buy it. Maybe we don't have the money and the child is busy throwing tantrums. So the road of correction shall drive it far from him because it is in there. We should know that. That's how they beat each other because that foolishness is in them. The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. That is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. So all through childhood, through youth, the heart is evil. It is therefore necessary that training and teaching be done early in life. Okay? Early in life. When you wait, then uh, the child gets lame, lame in the way they are doing things. But when we correct them, when we teach them, it helps to take away those things that affect them. So it's really important that we train our children. And one wonders how far should we go as parents in training our children, in correcting them. But in Proverbs 13, 24, we are told that whoever spares the road hates their children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. So careful to discipline. Eh? Not just disciplining, but you discipline in a careful way. What has the child done? How are you going to discipline? What is this discipline going to achieve? Proverbs 22.6 tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the things they learn from us are the things they grow up with. I know of a young boy, maybe mid-primary, early to mid-primary. One time they had a, a, a function at school and the music, dance, drama, so was given a sash to put on. This sash was made of, uh, <laughs> what is it called? It has uh, skin, animal skin. So the child was told to put on just like others. And the child refused, said, no, my parents don't agree with this. So the way the child perceived the skin eh, for dancing, maybe associated it with witchcraft or what, I don't know. So you see what you train a child, the child will not forget. So how we bring them up really matters. So in the know that this we don't associate with as a family, they will take it as that. And they will stand up for themselves. In Ephesians 6, 4, we are told, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Do not provoke them to the point of anger but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In the nurture, in the training, in the instruction, we should train and instruct them in the way the Lord does. In admonition, in a firm warning, we give firm warnings, reprimand, if you're reprimanding, let's be firm. Let's stay to our word, don't say, I'll beat you or I'll punish you. Then you say, okay, let me leave you. If you've said, do it. Let's be firm. What we've said, let's do. But as we do that, let's not provoke them to the point of anger. Let's also listen before. As we discipline, remember, we need to explain. We need to do it in love. We need to be able to explain why we are disciplining. If the child needs to be listened to, listen, then be able to decide. The Bible also tells us what the children are to get from the parents to help them overcome the evil nature in this world. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, that my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. How will the child hear what they have not been instructed in? 
So it is us to instruct. When we instruct, then they will hear. So let's instruct them so that they will not forsake the law and not forsake the ways that we've taught them. So if we imagine that children will know without instructing, I think it is expecting too much. Let's instruct them. And the word of God expects that both parents are to be obeyed and honored equally by their children. That is in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. So really, as parents, we are not there to take sides that I am the better parent, I am the better parent, I am the one who did this. Because the children are supposed to honor, obey us equally. Okay? So they need to know that we, we are partners in this. Fathers and mothers are constituted home authority to nurture children along godly paths and to admonish them away from ungodly ones. Authority, what do we mean by this authority? This is the power or the right given to, to, to give orders. So as parents, we can give orders to our children. We've been given that authority. We can make decisions. We can enforce obedience. We tell them you have to obey because I'm your parent. Okay? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, still, and also chapter 6, verse 20 to 22, tell us more about that. So this is the, real, the assurance we have as parents, because even the word of God tells us that we have been given authority. So we can enforce discipline, we can enforce obedience, we can give orders to help our children become better people. So as parents, we have a role in the outcome of our children. And the Bible tells us about that. In Galatians 6, verse 7, it tells us that what a man sows, he will reap. So we are sowing into our children. Sowing. So the influence that parents have for good or evil is much greater than we often realize. The things we do, the way we talk, the way we do things, influences. We are an example to them, okay? So they learn. Actions speak louder than words. Remember we said good steward. Are we being good stewards? So that they are able to learn from us. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. We've had many times people saying, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> haven't you heard that but for the children let's tell them to do as we do but what are we doing let's do the things that we want our children to do that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine in Titus chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 so as we speak we speak the word of God we are the first teachers about the word of God. So the sound doctrine that we put in our children right from an early age is very important and that will help shape them. Demonstrate to your child that God loves all men equally and he will see the white fields of our harvest as savior, our savior so. So the future of our children is important so that they know that all people are equal. Don't treat others because of the way they are looking or the way they are talking, because of what they are, but let's treat everyone equally. So as I said earlier, the role of parents in the outcomes of our children. For those who have gone through business studies I've tried to imagine a child as a project. God has given us our children like projects, a project. Imagine, this is your project. There are people who are in projects, they are managing projects. What are the inputs that we are putting in? What are the words we are saying? What are the examples we are giving? These are the inputs. 
All these are inputs. Then what are those processes? What are those activities that go on in the life of a child? The nurturing, the training, the correction, showing them the right direction. So after that, what are the outputs? What kind of behavior, what kind of life is this child going to show? Because when you see a child, then you know what kind of parent or parenting the child has had. Okay, the kind of respect, the kind of obedience, you know that this is a child who must have been taught. So the outcome is the family is happy, the child is happy, and we get a better nation and a better world. Let's look at our children as projects. Then we'll be able to know and look back and reflect. Is it the right inputs that we've put? The outcomes that we've had, are they the, the outputs? When you see your child, are you happy with them? So we need to reflect on the inputs that we have, on how our children are turning up at every stage. Because when does parenting end? Does it end? Does it end at graduation from nursery school? Does it end from, at graduation from high school or university? I think parenting is a lifelong thing. So let's keep reflecting and going back and seeing what we can do different. We go back to the drawing board. We say, okay, maybe here we did not guide well or we did not discipline well. What can we do different? So in the end, we'll get a better world. So this brings us back to our theme verse, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you'll find rest for your souls. But you said we will not walk in it. So this is telling us to reflect. Probably we've not seen them as projects, but this can be a new way of thinking. Are we happy with our project? Is there anything along the way that we need to go back to? Go back and reflect on and see how we can make it better. As a parent, can you sit back and say, yes, my child has gone through this stage and I'm confident they are comfortable going through. Can you send your child elsewhere and know that she'll be, he or she will be comfortable because of the training that you've had, because of the nurturing you've given, because of the correction you've gin, given this child? I remember when I was going to get married those years back, Mama then told me that I'm confident that you manage your marriage because I know you, how you've lived, okay? So a parent being confident that you will be able to go through marriage because they've trained you, they've seen how you've grown and they've nurtured you. So can we confidently say, I can confidently send off my child to go into a different world because you're happy, you've nurtured, they know the ways that you've taught them. So let's return to our primary responsibility. How do we return to our primary responsibility? Pray. Let's pray for our children. Let's pray continually. Continually, you don't, there's no end to praying. At every stage, every day, every time, whenever you are able to, let's pray. And praying with our, for our children and their needs, and also praying with them is very important. So that it's a daily practice in the home. When they leave the home, they go to school, maybe boarding school or elsewhere, they will continue that practice. Let's have a culture in our homes. Let them be introduced to that family altar and they will not depart from it. When they get their own homes, they will also continue that. Let's speak to, into their lives. 
At times we are quick to say the negatives, but let's speak positive things, things that will prophesy into their lives. A good example is in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3 to 13. There are many things there that we can use to speak into the lives of our children. In those verses, we see that our children will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. So we need to bless them, speak words of blessing. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. So the blessings that we give them now will live with them. Even when we depart, they will continue with those blessings. Your basket and kneading trough will be blessed. Your land will be blessed, blessed with food, with good produce, yes? In different ways, you'll be you, prosperous. You'll be the head and not the tail, prophesying into their lives, speaking into their lives. When they go out to study, that God will raise them up, that the enemies that rise up against you will be defeated before you. In this world, we get enemies, but speaking into the lives of the children, that those enemies will be defeated. So that indeed, that happens. So praying for our children is very important as we return to our primary responsibility. Teaching them the ways of the Lord. Those lessons that we teach them will develop godly character in them. This we see in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, and also in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. The teaching that we give as we go back to our primary responsibility, apart from praying, let's teach our children. Let us be a living example. Remember, our actions speak louder than words. Let us be a living example of Christ to the children. The righteous man leads a blameless life, blessed are his children after him. That is in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. Discipline them in the same manner the Lord disciplines us. So as we discipline, remember we should, this should be done for their benefit and not just because we are releasing our anger. You feel so angry that you feel like maybe disciplining or even beating. It should not be the reason because you're angry, but because it's going to benefit them. Explain to them why you're disciplining them and show love. After you've disciplined, say, okay, we've, we've taken out that rebellious spirit. <laughs> and show love. Show them that you love them, but you don't like what they did. But that doesn't mean that you don't love them. So there are practical ways uh, that we can see this in a number of verses in Proverbs that are listed here. Proverbs 13, 24. Proverbs 19, 18. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 11. We see a number of ways in which discipline is being done. In conclusion, members, God requires us to return back to our playing our roles in the lives of our children. God wants us to go back. Remember Jeremiah 6, 16. Standing at the crossroads and looking, we ask for the ancient paths. Where is that path? Okay, where is that path? So that we are able to find rest in our souls. You be, you, your soul will be at rest when you know that your child is well taught and corrected and is in life. So remember, parenting is a continuous job. We said it does not end as long as we are alive. Parenting continues. But it's a loving job. It's a loving job. Whatever we are doing, we are doing in love. As we provide, we provide in love. As we train, we train in love. As we correct, because we want a better child, we are correcting in love. Parenting is a twofold job. There is the nurture, the training that we talked about, training the child. 
in the different ways, physical, mental, psychosocial, spiritual, to help in their development. In this way, we are securing their future, aren't we? What kind of future are we securing? What outcome will it be? Another is in admonition or corrective discipline, trying to make sure that they are in the right place. So nurture and admonition. Correction in the way that the Lord expects us to. So dear parents, let's return to our primary responsibility. Return to your primary responsibility. Foster your child's physical, mental, psychosocial, and spiritual well-being. So in that way, we'll be securing the future of our children. But we know that in order to do this, we need... Can we do it in our own strength? It looks like it's a lot of things that I've talked about. What is impossible to man is possible with God. So let's trust God, even as he blesses us with his children, that he is able to show us, he's able to guide us, so that we are able to accomplish our role as parents. As parents, as good stewards, because we are here as ambassadors of God, we are his representatives for our children. So when they see what we do, then they will love our Father in heaven, because they know they love their Father on earth, their mother, then it's easier even to love God. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Evelyn Navunya Movidu. I have the singular honor to, to inform the honorable members of this important parent seminar that actually Dr. Evelyn Movidu is my, is my mommy. So, <laughs> so join me to thank her, please. We want to thank you so much for this very, very rich uh, piece of advice that you have given to the parents. We also want to thank uh, Dr. Drake Movidu for taking the initiative to come and join us this afternoon. Thank you very, very much. Uh, for parents, dear parents, I can't thank you enough for making the time. Sunday afternoon is such a very interesting Sunday because you want to lie down, you want to catch a nap, you want to pick up on the assignments of the week and schedule them, but making the time to be here means a lot. We want to thank you. Thank you for honoring the children's ministry. I've taken this microphone because my chair, where is Mrs. Na eh, Mrs. Chividige, has given me this opportunity to take over uh, from her, but I want to thank you so much. Again, I want to, I have heard that it takes a whole village to raise a child. And I am grateful for the people who are here this afternoon because I know that together we can. So shall, am I right to call you fellow villagers? <laughs> I want to thank you for coming. But uh, just before we proceed uh, to something next on our program, we want to we, we acknowledge that we actually run behind schedule. It's almost five o'clock, but we have had such an enriching time. We had uh, representatives from different sectors that we thought uh, would, you would give feedback to the parents as well because they interact on a daily with these children. So I want to take this very, very brief time to welcome these people here and uh, encourage that please use as little time as possible so that we can manage our time. So a subsection of the villagers will come here and sit on these uh, chairs and support 
the, the children's ministry to give you feedback. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, the children and youth pastor, Reverend David Asimwe. Would you please come and take up the seat? The parents would like to hear some feedback from you for the ministry. Uh, we want to welcome Mr. Echiri. Mr. Echiri is representing the Father's Union, but he also doubles as the head teacher for Green Hill Academy. We want to welcome Mrs. Senablia, uh, a mother and a representative from Mother's Union. We want to welcome Mr. Safari Daniel. Safari has done an amazing job in working with the teens. The teens tell him so much. So he has so much feedback to share with the parents. We have uh, the parents representative. The children's committee has, is managed by Mrs. Chibidige, but she has a team of very specialized ladies and gentlemen. And among them is a parents representative, uh, Mrs. Generous Turinawe, please. You're welcome to this panel. So dear friends and partners in the ministry of raising children, nurturing them in the way of God, we would like you to use as a very brief time to share with the parents what is it that you would like these parents to do? How can they, uh, how can they leave the talk that Dr. Evelyn has, tell, has, has just shared with us? How can we walk this journey? But also, what have the children told you that parents need to know? I would like to hand over the microphone to the head teacher first, uh, Mr. Echiri. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Our guest speaker, we want to thank you. Thank you so much. Usually here at Kisugu, when there are services, we are almost failing to fit in here. But I think the topic is very appropriate. Parenting begins with that. That we do not understand sometimes what it is and uh, it could be the reason some of our friends are not here and uh, the challenge is that everybody you know there is no transition that when you are a child in a home and then you are going to become a parent that education is not very good there how do you become a father and a mother maybe even our grandfathers did it better but for these days the lesson is there are not very many so that is where the challenge comes from now I start to parent my children the way I think. And when they call me for, the, for these reports, even at school, they work harder. So let's ask for this report. I know some parents say, uh, I may not be in position to read. Even if you can't read, I know parents who sit with their children and they say, write the work, even when they are not going to read a number in the at work. So let's show responsibility. Then the other one, Maybe just to ask you, what are some of the things this should come back with? Let me engage you a little. What do you expect when they come? They are coming back next week. What do you expect that they come back with from school? I know you don't have a microphone, but I will hear. You just shout the answer. I've talked about the report. The second one. Sorry? Holiday work. That is the communist. Another one. Sorry? Satchelors. Now, those satchelors, as I mentioned, are the ones which come back. And then the parent asks on the top reporting, how much is the fees? But the satchelor was there. Then also look at the property they took. Check one by one. I know of particular parents who will check item per item before you leave school. And these parents have not made losses or the children have not lost the property. Because they know, if I lose a sweater, mommy will not take me before we get this sweater. They will recover it. Whereas there is somebody who is coming in, whether the suitcase is empty, we go. 
the following term they buy new ones like uh, the guest speaker said and it is full so you may find five sweaters of a child in a school there is nobody who is responsible let the children just you know even when the money is there yes but can we show them that there is responsibility over these uh, items then also ask them about their classes and their friends the people they interact with in the class. Who is your friend? So they do not make bad friends. What does he do? What did he perform like? Hey, you mean you have a friend who is getting this mark, maybe far below. How does this person develop you? But sometimes we are not interested. And when we go to school, can we make sure we get the friends of these children? Share with them, even ask them, what did you get? What did you get? Ten of them. Then the other one is ask your child, what did you get? How come this is your friend, but you are far away from their scores? I would say a lot, but I think the issue is time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. But let's find out what our children are coming back with and have a program for them to follow during the holidays. If you put it there, they will follow. If it is not there, they will do what they think throughout. God bless you. The trends have changed that even in Mr. Bean, there are gay issues and whatever. If I had time, I would show you that clip and you'd be like, oh my goodness, really? So, a project calls for us to step forward and even study what they're watching, study the trends, study the language, and study many, many other things. And the would have even said much more than that. Because these children are too, too sharp. That's number one. So, it calls for us as parents to study and study and study so that we're able to know what we are dealing with. I must say, children of today are too sharp and clever that if we do not study, they are ahead of the game. Number two is what you talked about is our availability. A girl came and phoned me in the office at 6 p.m. and said, I want to just spend some time here. A young girl of around 12 years and she wanted to spend some time because she was tired being at home alone. So if it's okay, you can sit. And seven o'clock, I'm going back home. She's still there. And I told her, can you now go back? And she says, I don't want to go home. Why? Because at home, I'd rather be here than be at home. And the parents are making money. But I forced her to go and she left. And I went back home. Somehow I was going to pick something at, at my office at 10 p.m. and they put her sleeping in the children's office on the bench. I'm like, how come you're still here? I told you I prefer to be here than be at home. And to end the story, these are parents who are working and they're making money and the child is lonely. Sad to be a role model, but I will share. I will share that um, we have three boys and one girl. And they have grown, they are now all teenagers because our last born is 13 years now. And uh, from childhood, we have worked with our children. And I'm happy you talked about project. I have, we have taken it as a project. My husband and I said we are going to work as a team to make sure that we nurture our children. We do our part, if they go our way, take other direction, but we try, we will have tried. And uh, from the beginning we said, we will make sure we will drop our children to school and pick them ourselves. But we are busy people, we all travel. My, my husband travels all over the country, I also travel, I work from Kavali, and, uh, but we said we will do this. We will take turns. When you are to travel, I will stay. I will not travel. I will be in the company. And I will take care of these children, drop and pick and be with them and cook together and do everything. When you come back, we will be here for some time and I go from the takeoff. You will drop and pick and do everything in the house with them. So that is one of the strategies we laid. And I think Mr. Ekiri have seen us. We have picked, nobody has picked our children from school, however busy we are.
Nobody else has dropped our children to school. Nobody. However busy we are. So we made it like this. We, we hand over to each other. You take, take, bring, you come back, I go, you do. That's what we have done. And we have seen it that work for us. From nursery, uh, another thing, we said we are going to have family meeting every Saturday when they are at home. And we talk about the week, the first week. We talk about what happened to sc at school, wherever, and we talk with them. And because now they are old now, we discuss like old people. And also, we learn also from them. We give them opportunity to teach us some things. So, that is something we thought it might also work to, for us to bond with them. So, every Saturday, when they're at home, we have meetings in the evening. And we talk about things, some challenges, what, how do we solve these things. Uh, another, so we, we have been available, that's availability that every parent should have, however much you are busy, but at least you try. And um, also, this, this term actually, when they had, they had gone to school, I opened up a WhatsApp group for only us six people, the mother, father, and the four children. We have other WhatsApp for the extended family and the friends, and, but we open, I open this and I say, every message we hear, or every message I read that I feel our children should read and learn from, uh, I post. And my husband, every message he finds positive. For their phones, we have them. They are, they are in our room. They are not with them. But, and I am on the WhatsApp with my husband, two of us. <laughs> so we, we, I post, he responds, he posts, but we feel like when they come and they have these phones, they will find these messages here. And then we will sit in our meetings and talk over and learn, and they get to, yes? So we have done those. Another thing we, we have uh, tried to, to do is to share especially the, the, the challenges and problems and consequences we see happen, okay? And uh, to know their friends. And this one, sometimes they have friends, I say we have a fellowship, we want to go here, and sometimes there's a football, like um, in holidays, there's some football, they want to join with other friends from their schools, but we don't know, and it's like over where we are meeting in the town. Those ones we say, uh, those ones we don't know very well. And so I want to visit my friends and so, but we say, who is the mother with their father? Okay? And we say, if you had an arrangement, maybe their fathers should call us, or let their children tell their fathers call us so that we can know whose child is meeting our children. But those ones we are not sure and we don't know. We don't really allow. And we tell them why. We tell them why we have refused. Sometimes they feel we are hard parents and say you are, but sometimes say, but you are very strict. We tell them it's because we love you and uh, this strictness might help you to escape some of the problems. So we now they know. They knew, they know. So and when they are going even here at church, I am available. I bring them and they because there are chances that I participate in some activities, I will be there and do this until they finish. And then we will go back together. But I had this thing, we give them space. And I still need to learn from, yes, we give them space, but how? Okay, sometimes it's challenging to us. Eh? And uh, lastly, what I want to share is phones. They have phones, but they each one get a phone after you have finished uh, P7, like maybe secondary. For secondary, that's where we need to give them phones. 
but those was even when it was the Zoom time for classes, COVID, um, they, the, the last one was my, would use my phone. If I'm not there, I will use a laptop. But in the evening, all the phones are handed over to us. They don't stay in, with the phone. During the day, you can't control because you will not be there all the time to see what they are learning, if they are in class, what they are searching. But at least at night, they can't see it is time for going to sleep. All the phones hand in and they sleep in our room. So we set time for phones and handing in. And so we don't allow anyone to sleep with a phone. What they watch to do, well, we don't know it by God's grace, but at least at night, no. So, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now, Safari, thank you, Madam General. Safari uh, kind of manages the teens' service. When we started the teens' ministry here, we had less than 20 children. Now they cannot fit in a, in a hundred-seater tent. They are all over the place. When the, the tent is full to capacity, and many of them sit out of the tent. And guess what? Even when it's shining as bright, brighter than now, they are seated. So Safari, what are you telling our teens? <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. My name is Safari Daniel. I'm really so honored. I work under Mrs. Chilige, <clears throat> and I'm honored to speak before my vicar uh, and, uh, and the parents as well. I'm not yet a parent, but what I've learned today, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to be a best parent. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Nawinya. So um, I work closely with the teens from the age of 13. 19. Uh, not what I tell them, but uh, the feedback I have to the parents. We have a very broad topic called media. Uh, if we do not manage our children, media is going to manage, it, to manage them for us. Uh, to mention but a few, we have what we call TikTok, we have Instagram, Twitter is a bit official, uh, we have Facebook, WhatsApp, and ETC. These people have done a great job in spoiling our kids. There is a, a actually not a culture, but several cultures that they have taught our children, disciplines that you don't have a clue of. I have a, I have a young sister, is six years. So I happen to leave her with my phone. The moment I got my phone, uh, two hours later, she had opened up a Snapchat account. Six years. Snapchat account and she had followers because of the single video she had posted in just hours. That is a six year old. And we, and we are dealing with people who are 14 and above 19. I want to tell you parents, uh, at least on this, try to be strict. There is what I always tell friends of mine that are parents, now it's uh, beyond our control that uh, these children have got to learn from the internet. Uh, you have bought for them tablets. They send them work from school, and that is true. But then I need you to keep a close watch. Yes, give them a tablet. But then at the end of the day, scrutinize whatever he or she has done on the internet. This is what you do. You open up the search engine, that is Google. You can write this down. 
and uh, you go and tap that profile thing, you tap it, it will bring you history. And then uh, settings and what? You tap on history. Whatever that girl or boy has done on the internet, whatever he or she has searched for, will bring it so. Then you will know, Safari is serious, is doing biology, is doing chemistry. And then when it's not proper, the, his, the search history is not proper, you take a check. Is that all right? Uh, thank you uh, uh, for whatever you do with the phones. Now during day, because you're not there, you can do that. And there you will know. And then there are also some settings. I've, I've seen them with iPhones. I, I don't know whether Android has got it. I will continue searching. There is child protection. You can get that setting. So whatever uh, this boy or girl is going to look for in the phone, he or she will not get it because he's young. And then the other thing is, as Dr. Nawunya said, please pray with these children. Kindly. If there is anything you ever forget, pray with them. There is a, a 14 year old that uh, randomly chose, kindly give us a closing prayer. She said, I don't know. And, and, that was, and that was a good check for me. Because we normally assume that they all know to pray, even a closing prayer. They don't know. Kindly pray with them. What you pray is what they will pray. They learn by whatever we do. I started praying by imitating what my brother was praying. And up to now, I still find those words getting into my prayer. Is that okay? Kindly pray with these children. With those few remarks, allow me to appreciate Madam Chivilige and, uh, and Sylvia for giving me this opportunity to work with these children. They are precious souls. And may God abundantly bless you as you take this new journey of uh, monitoring and managing the media of your children. Amen. Thank you very much, Safari. Now, Mrs. Senavria, please, would you like to take over this microphone? What would you like the mothers to take away? Uh, praise God. Uh, my name is I am representing Mother's Union today. Um, actually, our chairperson, uh, Mrs. Lutuama, Deborah, was supposed to be here, but I'm standing in for her. Um, I'd also like to add my voice and appreciate the organizers, and uh, specifically uh, Dr. Islin Nabunya. Thank you so much for the words of wisdom uh, that the Lord has placed in your mouth today uh, to talk to us on this very important topic. Uh, indeed, parenting is a lifetime job. It's indeed, um, yeah, like she mentioned, it's good, it's hectic, but it's very good. It's, like, it's a lifetime job. Actually, I have a friend who always tells me, ah, Betty, how do you do it? I have teenagers. I don't have the little ones anymore. Now my children have grown. So every stage you pass through is different. You know, she's always like, oh, Betty, at least you, you have teenagers. Oh, you're very okay. And I keep telling her, my dear, parenting does not end. It is forever. Even when our children are married, or I don't have anyone who has gotten married, but still, parenting never ends. Uh, so my fellow parents, uh, when I'm always invited to, to, uh, to such seminars to do with parenting, my catch verse has always been um, 
the proverb 22.6, train up a child that when she grows up, or he, he will not depart from the way that you've trained the child. A parent, it's very unfortunate that as parents, we have neglected our role. We, we need to go back to the roots. Like the English say, charity begins at home. I think everything has to begin with that. Before we even um, uh, start like telling our children like maybe go to so and so, go to the teachers, we've, we've burdened our teachers so much because we feel we have paid the school fees. We feel, yeah, Mr. Ikiri, you have to step on the whole role, but that is wrong. And that is what us parents are doing. We need to go back to our roots. We need to stand. Everything has to begin with that. Otherwise, we are going to lose it all. I went to a parent's, uh, it was a parent's day interaction with the teachers, and most of the children were like, we are stressed. These are secondary school children. And I was wondering, stressed? That is the question or the, the word I'm hearing very much these days, we are stressed. That is the children, they are stressed. And I just wonder over what. But it's basically because as parents, we have neglected our role. We need to go back. We need to turn back. Because initially, the children were raised by many people. But now, it's like, no, you don't have to talk to my child. It's a crime. So my fellow parents and parents-to-be, I think we need to go back to our roles. We need to train our children in the way that they should go. Because they'll never forget. When it begins from home, it should not begin from the school. But we are thinking that we are too busy. We are making money but we are losing it all. We are going to have a generation and we are going to regret. The tears we are going to cry, it's because of our own making. So my fellow parents in this audience, I urge you, please, let us go back to the road. Thank you very much. And may the Lord guide us as we carry on our responsibilities uh, to nurture the gifts of children that he has entrusted us with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Senavulia. Let's return to the role that the Lord gave us. Matthew 28 so clearly says it. Teaching them, Matthew 28, verse 20. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you to, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Thank you so much, panelists, for giving us your time and your thoughts. Please don't go away yet. We'd like to still uh, look at you and ask you a few questions. We want to take this uh, opportunity to take just a few questions from three parents. Three parents. And uh, as the parents come up, I want to take this opportunity to also recognize the presence of the decision, decision Children's Minister, Madame Anne Mwesi Je. Madame Anne is in charge of the Children's Ministry at that diocese. Thank you so much for, have, for coming to honor this meeting. Um, two, three parents. Yes, please, Matt, Sarah. What is the role of a father in a home? And the child was, was actually had written to read newspapers. <laughs> so while the mother was going through the homework, looking at the, the child's homework, she was like, no, 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 put, put something proper. But, but that's what the child had always been seeing, read newspapers. 
anyway, that's a challenge to, to all of us. Um, but my question is, um, you know, there are an increasing number of children who are being brought up by single parents. And yeah, for one reason or the other, how can that gap be filled? Because, well, some of the attributes that you see in them are positive and sometimes they are negative. Yeah. How can that gap be filled? Uh, sometimes even in school, you know, sometimes they feel out of place. I don't know, different, different things. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. Thank you so much. There's another hand just by. Thank you so much for the chance. Protocol observed. Please, all those who are, who have any connection with these schools, would you from the beginning also talk to the teachers? Because the teachers from nursery school, they sort of like let the children think they are too low. How? My child from nursery school would never come back with a hanky. Every day the teacher would take the hanky. Yeah? And when she went to primary school, I would pack fruits for her. I would pack two apples and tell her, share, the, share them out. And the teacher would also ask the kid, me too. They have that word, me too. Even the <laughs> teachers say, me too, to the children. Thank you. I think that's uh, just a, a point of uh, information. Yes, Ma Mrs. Chibrige. I am sorry, I'm still laughing about the me too. Uh, <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Kamya. Um, I want to take the opportunity to first of all thank Dr. Nabunya very much for just reminding us of going back to where we need to be. And I wanted to start by saying one of the things that struck me was, and this just helped me think about going back to our primary responsibility, the willingness to give up something for yourself for the sake of your children. That, that for me was an amazing example. Mm -hmm. And watching how God works through it to give you back that opportunity. So being willing to say, I will not take that promotion because my family is more important. That, that really reminded me of what it means to go back to where I need to be. That is one. But two, I was listening to Generous, and I had a question here. Um, I also have children. I, I happen to have children from two age groups. So I have two families in one. I have the older children who are all adults. And then I have the younger children who are children. And uh, I have questions like, uh, my, my younger son asked me, how come you don't tell Tendo when to watch TV and when not to watch TV? Mm -hmm. Or how come for Tendo you don't tell him, there's another question, now I've forgotten the exact question. But the point was, how come for him, he can do as he pleases and I can't do as I please? And I had to explain to him, and I said, TJ is 22. You are how old? I am 11. I said, okay, the rules are different. But the question I am asking, how do you parent adult children in your home? Because the truth is, parenting younger children is easy. You can tell them, bring your phone, it is 10 o'clock, and they will bring your phone. My 22-year-old son, you don't start telling him, bring your phone, that it sleeps in my room. And he looks at you and says, and you are who? You, you know what I'm trying to say. Of course, he gives me the respect, but he's 22. You know, I can't exactly say, give me the phone. Or, you know, you will talk about the things he needs to do, but you can't enforce them. Does that make any sense? So the challenge today also is how do you parent adult children respectfully in a way that, yes, they know you are their mother or their father, but you, they are still under you and they need to, I don't know. Yeah, th that, that is a question. For me, it's a challenge. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. We had said three hands, but I can see two hands raising up. Please, only that two, yes. Mm. 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 You want to answer. Thank you, protocol observed. You know, the way we talk to our children, your older children, 
you must, when you are talking to them, don't talk when the young ones are there to see you. Because they said, mm -hmm, you have not done this to so in the so, so don't do it also to me. So learn how to talk to them. The young ones handle them separately from the older ones. So that they will not say, mm -hmm, mommy, you did this to so and so, you did not. The way you approach the other one, don't do it to the other one. That's why when you just go and talk quietly, the boy can give it to you, not in the presence of the older, the young ones. So you have to handle them separately. Yeah. For me, I've continued to be a parent. My first three are married. I still parent them. You have to talk to them how to stay in their homes. You can, it is a continuous process. And these young ones, for me, I'm sorry. I told my children, for you it is because of the COVID. I told my children, no phones until you reach the university. And they listened. Hmm. I said, why? I'll give you at the university because you are now an adult. You can know what is good and bad for you. When you are still in HS, no way. And that would like to talk to our friends. What are you going to talk with them during holidays? Holidays, when you come, it is a time of rest. And I have to assign you duties to do. In fact, I'm just in endangered they knew me. That Mrs. Sukumu, thank you. Your children never gave us hard time. Whenever it was activities on the compound, they would do their work and complete, even return the horse. So parents, what will your children remember you for? For me, they tell me, Mommy, we remember you very well. I would beat them until they <laughs> understand what I am trying to tell them. And as a teacher, I managed to teach them. In a class, when I'm teaching, they have not really got. I'll just be with them. How can other children understand? And you have not. That made them to work hard. Praise the Lord. Amen. So be consistent in your training. Yes. Don't do it once, and another time you don't. Be consistent. Mm. Until when, for me, all of them have completed university. Because I've been very consistent with them. They said, train up a child the way you should live. You will never depart from it. Spare the road, spoil, spoil the, child. the child. Many of you don't want to beat your children these days. You are spoiling them. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mrs. Okumu was my P2 teacher, by the way. So we want to thank you for that job well done. <laughs> yes, praise God. Uh, I, want, I heard Mrs. Safari say about things about a phone, and, but I had a scenario this week uh, when I checked my, my son's, my son's uh, work, midterm work, it was 15, it was uh, 15 position. Eh? So w when I always bring him from school, because he, he wants me always to pick him from school and take him, because at, at that the time, I always, I always use a scooter, and my wife uses a car. So when, 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 she, when, he, sit, when he sits in, in front of a scooter, he thinks he's riding. <laughs> so, we have a, a, so he doesn't want to move in a car, he wants to be on my scooter. So uh, he told me that you buy me a calculator, and then I told him, why do you want to, to use a calculator? Say that, 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 that watch which are the calculator, the, the, those kids watch with the calculator, calculator buttons. So I told him when you, when, when you have 100 percent in mathematics, I'll buy you a calculator. I said no. Now if I get 100, you buy me a smart watch. So after, after his exams, he told me, today, Daddy, I've got 100. I told him, oh, have, have you seen the, the marks? I've, I've answered everything. <laughs> so when, 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 when uh, the, 
when the results came out, I asked, I asked the teacher, how, my, how, how, how has this guy scored in mathematics? He got 96. And then <laughs> I told him, now you have not made 100. Then after, the next day, when they checked English, he had got 100. He said, I've got 100 in English. I need my smartphone. So I got that. I, I, now I'm coming to the point that I had to look for that smartwatch. But when I, I searched in, in town, a smartwatch is a smartphone. It has, every, you know, because I had, I had to, 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 to check and, and sit and told them, give me a kid's smartwatch. And all of them, many of them, they are like a, smart, a smartphone. So I had to get, they had to look for me that one which is like a catoch, just those <laughs> brick games and a few things on them. So now whenever he puts in games, it asks, it asks for, for what? For a SIM card. And I tell him, you, you, don't have a, you don't have a national ID, so <laughs> you wait. Because I, I don't know if we put a SIM card in, what will happen to that? So let us get caution of, of uh, the smart watches. They are like phones. That was my point. Thank you very much, Mr. Kawalia. We, uh, now there are two hands coming up, but we are really running behind schedule. Madam Anne, if, uh, okay. Madam Anne, just very briefly. Actually, mine is not uh, a question, but an appreciation uh, for this kind of arrangement. I know the Ministry of Gender came up with parenting guidelines, and the, and the province of the Church of Uganda took them up. They launched uh, parenting guidelines. I know one time when I was sharing at the diocese that we've got parenti parenting guidelines, and one of my colleagues said, I mean, they've come up with guidelines on how to eh, discipline our children. <laughs> you know, he saw it as a funny thing. But you will agree with me that those of us who have been here, we need this kind of thing. Uh, if you are a parent like me, we've done uh, mistakes, many mistakes before. But such kind, kind of arrangement helps us to, you know, to do better in the future. So I want to thank you so much uh, for this kind of arrangement. And I want to encourage the parents that are here to encourage our fellow parents to come and listen to this. Because this is, I know that each of us who has come has been blessed. Uh, please keep on uh, you know, organizing such uh, seminars. They are very, very important to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Anne. Sylvia, is that a question or? Okay, would you be brief, please? Yes, praise the Lord, Church. Yes, we thank God for today. My little, I appreciate the speaker and all our submissions. Yeah, a little addition, it's not a question. It's, we, we are restricting them we want to manage them. I think uh, Dr. Ivrin talked about it. We need to train them to deal with life challenges. We've been doing purity classes in schools, and it's, it's, it's sad what our children know. It's very, very sad where we think we are protecting them. So as we pray for them, let's train to them to make right choices. I think it will help us because we are going to, they are very, very bright. On WhatsApp, there are, there are archive settings where you can hide whatever you're chatting. And I can give you my phone and you don't know what I'm chatting. Yes, so if we train them and we tell them, yeah, you're making this choice, but it has consequences, so they have a right to make a choice, but when we've opened up to them. And I think it will come when we find time for them. Yeah, knowing that they are, they are friends, but also sitting to talk to them. Because we have children in, in P2, in six to seven years, and a child is on WhatsApp. 
and you're chatting, and the child sends you, hello, teacher's leave, and you're like, what are you doing? This is my number, you will find me on this phone. And the parent is happy. So if we help them deal with, learn how to manage life, choices, they know if I have a WhatsApp phone at P7, how am I going to use my phone? I think it will help us, because there is no way they are very clever. We pray for them, and we be real to them, we teach them how to make right decisions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Now we have this, uh, this question that has remained unanswered. And I know some people were just giving uh, supplements or kind of information for some of uh, the questions raised. I would like to throw this back to Dr. Evelyn. We are living in changing times, they have said. And uh, the village has dispersed. The aunties are not so close. The kojas are not so close. And the parents are single. How, and they have children. How can they be supported? Thank you very much, Children's Ministry, Chisugu. I think you've done a great job organizing this, so I really wish to appreciate once again. I appreciate the people who have spoken. Uh, learning never ends. Every time, there's something we can learn. When you move, try to pick something you can learn. I've also learned something today. That pending question about the, the single parent, single parenting has, I think it has been shown to increase these days. Probably it was there in the past, but it was not felt. Why is it being felt now? Even in the past, there were single parents, but it was not something amplified. It was a little subtle. As my Mogole said, the village has dispersed. <laughs> the village has dispersed. The village used to be together. So now that the village has dispersed, what do we do? When the village disperses, who else is there? Does this single parent remain alone in an island? I think we need to look at what is around us and to use the opportunities Let's look at the opportunities. Your relatives may be far. They may not be in the life of the child or your children. They may be out of reach, but who are those people within reach? People that you interact with, people that they look up to. This calls for heads to join together. I cannot have one right answer, but all of us can work together to see what best answer. When you're in a community like this, you belong to a church. There are church members around you. There are people you look up to as parents. There are people who are there like your own siblings, who are there with you in your life. People that even your children can look up to as role models. Can we use church? Which better role models than those that you know in church? If you belong to a community, these days there are many groups that people have made in their communities where they live. Last week I attended a graduation ceremony and the parents had groups and groups and groups and I was wondering, uh, this is a doctor, an obstetrician, how that person could even make such groups so people have time to make groups, but let's see in those groups, who are those people that can be role models, that can be looked up to? If it's a single mother, who are the ladies in there who can talk to your children? If it's a single mother, who are the men around that won't take advantage of you and yet are there that can be looked up to? These days, it's so hard, the village has gone. <clears throat> Those days during holidays, 
your parents would send you. You go for a whole holiday away from home and you were entrusted. You had your cousins, you had your uncles, aunties, and people knew you were safe, and indeed you were safe. Everyone would look up to you. When I would go to the village, I remember after my P7, everywhere I visited, people would slaughter a chicken for me. P7, because they're all a part of your life. But where do you find that now? After my S4, where we visited, they, they slaughtered goat. Eh? So such life seems like history. Okay? These days, it's nuclear, nuclear within, because you don't know when you leave your children what will happen to them. So that is the difficulty. Even as a single parent, it's difficult to entrust other people because you don't know what will happen. The world is full of so much evil. The people you trust sometimes are the same people who cause problems for your children. As I told you, I've dealt with women, girl children for a long time. And the children we see who are abused many times, it's within the home. Family members. So how does this single parent entrust their children Many times we've talked about the girl child, but even the boy child now is not safe. Even the boy children are not safe. So I think we need God's guidance in this. You may think, you may say, okay, maybe this way, but it's good to guide. You really need to pray. As we said, we need to pray for God's guidance. So that really, the Holy Spirit talks to you. Because you may imagine this seems like a nice person, but you don't know what they may do to your child. We do not know. So I have no right answer. I think we go back to God. We go back to the drawing board. You say, God, this is the situation. Now I'm alone. What do I do? It's not that it's the end. Don't imagine that as a single parent, you cannot raise children. There's still hope in where every society, be it in school, maybe there are those teachers that really are trusted teachers. When you're in a society, there may be neighbors who are really neighbors, people who will not take advantage of you or your children. So it is still possible. We've seen many testimonies from single parents who have raised children, and those children have become very responsible people very responsible. They've made sure that children are raised. They've tried to look out for a village that can help. So let's try to look out for that village. But let's be careful as we choose the village, because the village can also turn around us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Evelyn. Let's pray that God will help to open our eyes that we will see the opportunities, the opportunities around us to help us to nurture the children in the way of the Lord. I want to thank you again. Thank you, panelists, for making the time to come. I think, in my opinion, you're one of the opportunities that we can look at. <laughs> so when we are look, thinking about issues of school, we can go to Mr. Ichi. When we are thinking about issues to do with church, we can go to Reverend David. Uh, when we are thinking about parenting, we can go to Mrs. Generous to Renawe right here. And then we, when we are wondering what our children are up to, we can go to Mr. Safari Daniel right there. And when it's about mothering and working with adult children, Mrs. Senaulia is right there. So we are grateful to God for some of the opportunities that we are beginning to see in our church. I also want to thank Mrs. Chivirige, who has given me this singular honor to welcome, to stand here before you, by the way. Nange, hmm. Chair, thank you very much. <laughs> but also to welcome Venerable Canon Reverend to share his thoughts and give us the closing remarks. You're very welcome, Reverend Canon. I don't know who is teaching you all of those titles. 
<laughs> and you will be in trouble because they are sometimes tricky. I want, first of all, before really, really I forget to extend our gratitude to Dr. Evelyn Nabunya for coming and for the presentation and also for the discipline. She was here before most of us and she sat there. But although I didn't know her, I would remember the photo. So when I looked, I said, she must be the one. So I came, went to her, thank you for coming and the team that has accompanied you, we really appreciate. Let us appreciate her one more time for the wisdom. But let me also extend gratitude to the Children's Church for organizing this. Uh, the chair, Vanessa, you are great. And the way you do, you were a great leader. You came, opened up, everything was set, who is doing what, when, and you sit there and you enjoy it. What a good leader you are. We want to thank you very much uh, with this Livia, and uh, thank you, our guests from the diocese. Muchala wafe anet. That one is the pastor's wife. Thank you for being with us. Let me say two, three quick things. The first one, I've thanked everybody, including you for attending the panel, the choir. Please, if I haven't mentioned you, I appreciate that you are here. One of the things I was bothered with during my leave was to think, is there no other way to do church? And that was a key question for me during leave. What is it we are not doing right as church? Is there no other way to do church? And even when I was here, I was thinking about it. The Archbishop came recently from Korea. They visited Korea, the church in Korea, and he said two things which I want to connect with this. One of them, he talked about the services. He said their services are three hours. And those three hours, one hour is for praise and worship. Hallelujah. Eh? <laughs> there is another full hour for prayer. And they have a third hour for teaching the word. And in their service, they don't have those things like announcements. They don't have those things like we are collecting offertory. No, people arrive, they know they have to give offertory, they give offertory at the entrance. These three hours are for prayer, for praise and worship, for the word. So how is that connected to this? An evening like this one is a great evening. But what if the children's church, when they have the children's Sunday, rather than only having the children sing, we can have a day for them to come and sing and do everything. And another day where the entire service has a talk, like this talk. You have a whole church full, everybody is here, they are now home, they are struggling with these same things. Is it possible to do a service like that? Why not? You do opening prayer and the confession and absolution, you go to the talk, you do the final prayers, you go. And we, at that level, where we can use the one hour and a half for a parenting, not seminar, for a parenting worship. <laughs> and for me, I believe we can do that. The Archbishop actually shared with us another thing, that they are focusing on what they call the next generation. Everything in the church 
for the coming, this time and the coming years, the main thing is the next generation. They have syllabuses for it. They have employed workers for that. They are training leaders for that. The whole focus is the next generation. Don't you think we need to give time to the next generation? Let me assure you, there is a meeting up there, very important meeting, but I could not dare to live here. Because those people in that meeting, they're in this generation, and very few years they won't even be around. This meeting is talking about the, gener the next generation. And so, my brothers and sisters, we really want to thank the Children's Church for organizing this. But let me thank you for one other thing, for making the link. You see, it is possible to think that what you are doing in the Children's Church, you are doing a good job. But connecting that to the parents is a big step. Because if you don't connect with the parents, what you do in the children's church can be undone when they go home. So probably we need more of this also. Yes, seminars like this, but also Sunday morning services like this. While I'm still with the vicar, I can grant that. This church was full, all the services. Wouldn't they benefit from this? So let me say my final thing. And my final thing is this, an encouragement. You see, sometimes we come and talk. And some people live and go with a lot of pain. It is like before I got married, I would go to the fellowship. And I would hear the brethren saying, giving a testimony. For me, with my wife, since we got married, the Lord has been good to us. We never get angry. We never, and I'm thinking, ah, I would want a marriage like that where you don't get angry. The truth is, it may not be there. So probably you are here or you are online and you think you have done the best about parenting. You think your children, you've tried to do this, you've tried to do that, you've tried to do the other, but still some of your children have not come out well, like Mrs. Okumo's children. And you are guilty all the time, you feel you have failed. This is the encouragement. I read something which they call the myth of successful parenting. The myth of successful parenting says, once you do everything right, your child must come out right. I want to tell you, sometimes some children will not come out right, even when you've done everything right. That myth of successful parenting, the argument in that theory says that actually God is portrayed as a parent. God is portrayed as a father. And sometimes is portrayed as a mother. And the child is Israel. And God did everything it takes for his child Israel to come out right. But sometimes Israel went off. So what is that? What happened? Was God a wrong parent? Did God fail in his work? And the answer is no. But there is what they call the will. You will do everything and you must do everything for the child. But sometimes they will choose the wrong thing. And the encouragement is this. The encouragement is 
for you always to realize that successful parenting is you being everything you should be as a parent, is you doing everything you should do as a parent, and leave the rest to God. Praise the Lord. Because you are not in full control. The question you should always ask, did I do the best I should have done? If you didn't do the best, blame yourself. But if you did everything you should do, if you were what you should be, and still the child turns out wrong, you are still a successful parent. Have you ever seen a family where the same parents treating them the same way in the same environment, some children come out excellent, and there is this one child who has totally gone the other side. Did the parent fail? No. They did everything they could, but the child has free will and might choose the wrong way. So don't beat yourself. Don't kill yourself. Continue praying and trusting the Lord. I don't want to push it further than that. But if you want, I can. Solomon himself who says, train up a child, where does he end? Have you ever thought about that? Did, did Solomon end up right? So what happened? There is that will. But the good news is this. If the seed of the Lord is there, the Lord himself will deal with that child as he dealt with Israel. Whenever Israel went away, God as a father continued to pursue continued to love, continued to draw back. Do you have a child that has gone that far? Continue to love, continue to care, continue to pray, continue to encourage. Don't beat yourself forever. You've done your part. Why don't you please stand and we pray together. Let's clap for our guests, the preacher, the sharing, the panel, everything. And we look forward to a better, fulfilling ministry where we are thinking about the next generation. Father, we thank you for the people who have given their time to come here. We thank you for the Children's Church, for the initiative to have this seminar. We thank you for the daily work they do in mentoring, in discipling our children. We thank you for the teachers. They work so hard in this ministry. We thank you for the ideas they have for the children's church, for the teens, for the youth ministry, the plans they have for the next generation. Lord, we pray that you will give us the same passion as a church. We pray that we'll be able to sacrifice like we heard from Dr. Evelyn. To be able to sacrifice for the sake of the children. That if it means giving hours on certain Sundays to focus on it, that we will be able as a church to sacrifice for the sake of sowing the seed. Now we pray for the ministry here at church. But we pray for the ministry in the schools. We can do all we can, but eventually we are dependent on you. You are the one who can soften the hearts of the children. You are the one who can protect our children when we are not there. Because they have many opportunities where they will be on their own. We pray that even then, you who is always there, you will do your part for us. We pray, Lord, for the ministry of those involved with the children, the counselors, the teachers, the parents. We pray that we will all work together and we will be able to see a generation which fears you. We pray for the parents who might be here or they are online 
and they cry day and night for those specific children. They have lived the way they should live. They have done everything they should have done. But there's this one child who has gone off. We pray for such a children. The Lord, you will fish them and bring them back. That you will give peace to their parents. That you will give the parents, even at that terrible moment, for them not to condemn them but to love them unconditionally. For them not to think of a battle with them, but to show that in spite of how far they have gone, they still love them. And Father, we surrender to you this evening as even we travel. Take us home safely. We look forward to another day when we are doing this same thing in this church, and that your church will continue to grow. Help us as leaders to support our children's church, our youth ministry, as we groom this nation. And even for what we are going to eat and drink, bless it. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon our visitors, our guests. Rest upon the children's church and children's ministry. Rest upon the parents. Rest upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, Vika. And again, thank you very much for the tea that you've made available for the parents. Dear parents, do uh, join me to thank the vicar and the leadership of this church for giving us this opportunity to have you, but also to have a snack with you. We want to have tea with you outside and courtesy of the vicar. Thank you very much.